Van Margera's various indulgences, ill-advised decisions, and general misfortune have combined in a series of disastrous personal life events. Here's the tragic real-life story of this former jackass star. You'd expect a man in Van Margera's line of work to have suffered more than his share of grim and grisly injuries. In a video interview with Maxim, he broke down some of his absolute worst ones, ranging from a broken tailbone to nasty face plants and torn ligaments. Despite this impressive resume of bodily harm, Margera says that his worst injury had little relation to his jackass work. The daredevil once received a bad head injury while shooting an episode of MTV's Cribs. He was set to perform a stunt that involved driving a banana-shaped car in water, but things went wrong, and he ended up crashing headfirst into water that was far shallower than he had thought. Margera had a nasty gash in his head, but was ultimately able to recover. Bam Margera's Jackass and Viva La Bam co-star Ryan Dunn died in a car crash in 2011, and in an interview with Fox 29 showed what a heavy toll the tragedy took on Margera. I was in Arizona when I heard. I was with some friends having the best time ever, and at 12.30, I just started punching out the windows of the rental van and ripping out the speakers. I don't even know why. I wasn't mad at anything or anybody. And if it was 12.30 there, that means it was exactly when he crashed. The interview was far from lip service. Dunn was very much Margera's best friend and had been since high school. The shock of his death contributed to the skateboarding jackass star's downward spiral of addiction. Bar brawls can be confusing affairs, and as the Philadelphia Inquirer reports, Bam Margera was involved in an especially convoluted one in 2015. He was at the Secret Solstice Festival in Iceland when a local rap group called Glacier Mafia reportedly attacked him at a bar and beat him up. Margera was punched at least three times, and though he was initially reported to have filed charges, he apparently opted to leave the country instead of pursuing legal action. Though that's the gist of the story, the reasons behind the incident are rather more complex. Some people alleged that the reason behind the fight was that members of Glacier Mafia were angered by Margera's verbal abuse of two female members of the security personnel. A representative of the festival alleged that Margera started harassing two women who were blocking him. On the other hand, Margera told an Icelandic newspaper that no harassment of any kind took place, and that the rappers were actually in cahoots with his former publicist Leon Hill. According to Margera, he had beef with Hill and wanted to discuss some things, so he attempted to lure the man out by claiming he was a journalist looking for an interview. Margera said, He comes up thinking it's a Rolling Stone interviewer just to find me, so him and his boys beat the out of me. It has nothing to do with anything else. Bam Margera followed up his jackass success with Viva La Bam, which focused on Margera's chaotic existence in his native Chester County. Along with putting his loved ones in the spotlight, the show was custom-made for Margera to rise to further fame, and it ran for five seasons, which was much more than the Jackass show managed. While the spotlight certainly shone brighter than ever on Margera, Viva La Bam and its shooting schedule had an extremely unfortunate side effect. The famous skateboarder couldn't skateboard anymore. When we first started, I was skating five hours a day. Then when you have 40 people waking you up at 9 a.m. and showing up at your house to film you, crew, best boy, Dolly, it became, bam, we can't spend two hours filming you try to land one trick for one second of screen time. We need to get dialogue. If you want to see true fear on screen while watching Jackass, look for any scene that features Bam Margera and snakes. As the Philadelphia Inquirer notes, the man's fear of snakes is a very real thing and the other Jackass members haven't exactly been sensitive about it. Made the poor decision, I'm like, ooh, I hate snakes. Now they're all around me all the time, thanks. Such pranks have left him visibly shaken and crying very real tears of terror, as opposed to the franchise's usual funny even when it hurts vibe. In a 2015 interview with Rolling Stone, Margera was able to reminisce on his castmates' snake-themed treachery with fondness, but he also noted that he's not about to trust them with any other fear-themed revelations in a hurry. I learned to not tell Jeff Tremaine or Knoxville or anybody what you're afraid of. He added to this statement by sarcastically saying, I love spiders. Oh yeah, you can dump a whole bucket on me. I wouldn't even care. 
In a 2017 interview with Vice, Bam Margera revealed that he drank on a daily basis for an estimated three years and didn't much care which drink got the job done. At its worst, I would probably just wake up around 11 a.m. and instantly start drinking vodka and purple Gatorade. By the end of the night, I would probably have 10 pints worth of it. Another factor in his alcohol intake was that he hung around with rock musicians quite a bit, which helped him fall into a routine of drinking. However, at the time of the interview, Margera said that age has made him crave alcohol less, partially because he has started to see the downsides of alcohol abuse. He also said he's started using medication that helps with the cravings. Unfortunately, he seems to have fallen off the wagon since the interview. Bam Margera developed a reputation as a hard-drinking, hard-partying wildcard over the years, but as Vice reports, he was also dealing with a more private struggle, the eating disorder bulimia. Margera says that since Viva La Bam featured his heavyset uncle and father, some people started to assume that it was just a matter of time before he became obese. When he was inebriated, he was also in the habit of gorging himself on food. One time, I ate a frozen pizza. I was so hungry, I didn't even wait to cook it. I just ate it frozen. Margera says that he became bulimic when he taught himself to throw up at will for a trick called Tequila Stuntman. I think the reason I started throwing up was because I learned how to do it, and at the end of the night, I always felt like I drank too much. And if I'm drunk, I'll stuff my face with spaghetti. I would eat it, barf it all up, and it was like, I got my fill. But it was all pretty much due to alcohol. In a 2019 interview with Dr. Phil, Bam Margera revealed what sounds a lot like one of his lowest moments, the time he seriously considered suicide. I had such a mental breakdown that I really thought, like, I could just go to the lake and be free. However, he was able to pull back from these thoughts, thanks to his son, Phoenix. I was like, the pain was gone, and I had to beg for pain back. I was like, please just give me back my pain so I could stay, because I want to be with him. He admitted that the sight of his son was so instrumental in pulling him back from the brink that he's not sure how things would have ended otherwise. If I hadn't seen Phoenix, who knows where I'd be. Interestingly, Margera said that while Phoenix kept him in the land of the living, a large part of his breakdown came courtesy of other family members, namely his wife Nicole and mother April. According to him, his relationship with both had become extremely difficult due to what he perceived as their controlling nature and failure to adhere to his rules, though both noted they were trying to help him. The latest drama in Bam Margera's life started to unfold after the revelation that he won't play a part in the fourth Jackass movie, Jackass Forever. Margera was reportedly fired from the movie in August 2020 for failing to comply with a tight wellness agreement apparently crafted to keep him healthy and sober during the shooting. Margera has expressed his displeasure about the developments and at various points has named his castmate Johnny Knoxville, director Jeff Tremaine, and producer Spike Jones as the main forces behind the situation. He's sued Knoxville, as well as Paramount Pictures and other parties, for wrongful termination of his contract. Margera said in a statement, I am pissed off, angry, hurt, and shattered that Johnny, Jeff, Spike, and the studios and producers ripped off my creativity, content, and stunts to make this movie, fired me without justification, and refused to pay for my work. I created this franchise before any of these guys ever got involved. Jackass star Steve O, who's had his own issues with addiction in the past, has spoken against Margera's interpretation of the events, saying, Everyone bent over backwards to get you in the movie, and all you had to do was not get loaded. You've continued to get loaded. It's that simple. We all love you every bit as much as we all say we do. But nobody who really loves you can enable or encourage you to stay sick. If you or anyone you know is struggling with addiction issues, help is available. Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or contact SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP. 1-800-662-4357.